everybody! Welcome to Reboot Recaffeinate for our third, um, I guess, episode? video. Yeah, yeah, third episode. I uh, hope everybody's cool, had a good week. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so uh, Antonio, what have you been playing this week? Um, I've been playing a lot of the Star Wars Battlefront Beta on the PlayStation 4. Man, that is a very pretty looking game. Um, this game is slated to come out in November. Uh, the beta is available uh, basically for four or five days. And uh, what's playable, there are three maps. Um, there's your basic um, sort of uh, capture the area sort of map. Well, two of them kind of like that. And there's one that's specifically single player and co op, where you sort of fight off waves of enemies on Tatooine. Um, yeah, the gameplay is amazing. It reminds me a lot of the original PlayStation 2 games. Um, in terms of just simple mechanics, simple shooting, um, really uh, accessible gameplay. There's no... Uh, I mean, there is leveling up, but it doesn't keep you away from the fun stuff, like playing with X-Wings, or playing as Luke Skywalker. Um, they're sort of placed as coins throughout the level. Well, see, that's interesting, because, I mean, at least my experience with shooters tends to be, unless you are an expert at shooters, mm -hmm. and also spend hours and hours and hours just with that one game in order to get uh, basically put yourself ahead of the game and ahead of everybody else, it's, imp it's impossible to really penetrate into the actual field. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't usually play shooters and I don't play games like Call of Duty because, especially in the online anything, because I can't go like 10 seconds without getting killed. So... Yeah, I would definitely say that this, this game is a great introduction to online shooters. Uh, so Gianna, what have you been playing? Um, well, grad school has been a very interesting beast this <laughs> week, so I've just been kind of playing Kingdom Hearts. Um, I don't know if anybody else caught it, but I did a live stream of playing Kingdom Hearts Final Mix um, through Reboot Live, so last Wednesday. Played the Tim Burton Nightmare Before Christmas level? Yeah. Uh, cool. So yeah, I, I play a little bit of that, and I'll be continuing that this Wednesday, hopefully. And yeah, so that's pretty much what I've been playing, as well as just dealing with grad school. Um, I also noticed this week you've been playing Uncharted. Yes, the Uncharted uh, Nathan Drake collection came out, and it looks good. Uh, the original, the, the first uh, game in the series, uh, Drake's Fortune, looks so much better in HD. Uh, the second and third games were really pretty uh, to begin with on the PS3, so it's not a huge improvement. But they play well. I, I was seeing a few screenshots online of characters coming oh. in and out, so I'm kind of worried about that. Like, Nathan's face hasn't like exploded or anything <laughs> yet. But if that does happen, we're going to be on top of it. And there'll be a little bit of a review, I'm sure. Yeah, which was also disappointing to think. Yeah, but from what I've played so far, it, it's, it's run smooth. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to say, if you haven't played it, play it. It's fun. Yeah. So last week, we purchased Disney Infinity, where you buy these figurines, uh, you scan them um, on a thing, and then you play them in uh, the game. Um, last week, actually, LEGO Dimensions came out, where you buy basically LEGO figurines uh, similar to this, you scan them in, you play them in the game. Um, this is part of a, a bigger trend. I started with Skylanders, where, <laughs> again, you buy these toys, you scan them in, you put them in the game. Um, this is definitely a trend. People are definitely buying it. What are your thoughts? Um, well, initially I was actually skeptical of these kind of figures. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially with Skylanders, which looks like a terrible game. Um, and even with Disney Infinity, which honestly my initial reaction when it was first coming out was that it looks cheap and it looks like just a way for parents to spend more money um, and to basically kind of scam parents out of buying more and more figures just to play a game that, I mean, the way I perceived it could just be played on a disc mm -hmm. um, for kids. So, yeah, initially I was kind of worried. I mean, the, especially... The barrier of entry is kind of steep. Exactly. I mean, the game itself is, what, $60, so uh, the usual price of a regular game, but then on top of that, you have to buy these figures. Which are ordinarily 10 to $12. So that adds up pretty quickly. Um, and so it's really hard to kind of get over that idea that you're pl you're buying these in order to play more of the game. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of just seems like a take on like pay to play. Yeah. Um, and also it doesn't help that I know with Disney Infinity when we were buying it we had the issue of trying to figure out which version we should buy. Because, in terms of compatibility. Yeah, because I mean there's a lot of the ones on Disney Infinity 2.0 that we like. 
um, like the figures and then some of the levels that we can't play on 3.0. And yeah, these figures are from the newest edition that just came out this past month. Uh, Disney Infinity 3.0, Star Wars, and you got some other Disney characters like Mulan. It's like the only Disney character besides like Mickey and Minnie. Mickey and Minnie, there's a few other traditional characters. Um, there's gonna be some Marvel characters coming out this year. Yeah. And I guess I'm not as excited about 3.0 personally just because I like these Disney characters especially. Um, the one thing I actually really like about this figure is that it kind of looks like Mulan's voice actor. Mm. Uh, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent May, so mm. that makes me happy. I was really happy when I found her, but the fact is that not all the figures that I want to play are available. So, here's the thing. Um, we're collectors. <laughs> That's true. This is sort of something that's dawned upon us over the past year or two. We like to collect things. Uh, we like to collect salt and pepper shakers. We like to really bad salt and pepper shakers. The worst. We like to collect these mugs, as you can tell. Yeah. So, yeah, we definitely collect mugs. Um, vinyl, those little... Pop vinyl. Pop vinyl, yeah. Yeah, we're actually a big fan of pop vinyl figures, in part because they actually make figures for things that, I don't know, we kind of really enjoy that we really don't see a lot of representation from. So we have, like, the Book of Life figures mm -hmm. and, you know, Harry Potter figures and things like that. So I will say this feeds into that idea That's true. of... I mean, look at this. This Han Solo looks amazing. This Mulan well, looks pretty cool, actually. Looks great. So it's nice. You can definitely put them on. I don't know. We 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 basically put them on our shelves and stuff, and we're not too embarrassed about it. But um, not at all. they look nice. I guess if that I guess that is one nice thing is like so you're buying the toy and then the toy is an extra or figure or whatever and the toy is an extra thing to where unlike say some of our figures we have on our shelves right now. You can actually put this on a, um, a game pad and then it'll actually show up on a screen and you can play it. So. And I will say that this is, uh, in terms of getting kids into uh, video games, this is a great introduction to that. Um, not only are you using characters that they, they know, um, it's also not, not a horribly violent game or anything, it's for, for everyone. Um, and the, the games are fun. For them being kid, kid games, they're pretty fun. I know I've, I've been a fan of the Lego games since, gosh, Lego Harry Potter. Yeah, that makes sense. And Lego Star Wars, so... Even before that, with yeah. just the figures. Mm -hmm. um, no, it is actually, it's interesting because it's kind of bridging this new area of getting into AR and VR that mm -hmm. we are seeing now in terms of trends of recent gaming, where objects in the real world have implications in the virtual world. And I think that in itself is kind of shows a larger trend where these um, the separation between the real and the uh, virtual aren't it, like there isn't that same barrier anymore mm -hmm. and so this is showing things that you buy can actually affect what happens and what you play mm -hmm. um, and I think that's also interesting and of course the fact is when you buy these toys you can still play with them mm -hmm. um, and that's nice too. So I would say we've enjoyed our time with Infinity 3.0 um, if you can afford them I, I would recommend it. Um, it's definitely uh, a fun game. It's definitely a fun way to get, I guess, your family involved with video games if you have kids or if you just like collectibles. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's worth it. Um, I will say one of the big downsides is the fact that they, especially with Disney Infinity, that you have the multiple versions. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm interested to see how LEGO, um, what's the full title? Dimensions. How LEGO Dimensions kind of takes on this idea and potentially may not have as... because they're not going to have multiple versions, right? No, yeah, they signed on a deal where uh, they'll be adding new uh, levels and new characters. Because uh, right now they have a handful of characters. They have Ghostbusters, they have Marty McFly with Back to the Future, they have The Simpsons, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. I'm so excited. They're going to be adding to it, but they're not going to be asking you to buy a different version of the game. The Divinity, you have to buy 2.0 when that came out, then you have to buy 3.0 when that came out. And some of those levels don't transfer over, which is kind of frustrating. Mm -hmm. But with that, it sounds like it's strictly a platform that you purchase, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's interesting. And honestly, I have a feeling that a lot more games are going to be doing this because it is shown to be a very productive and, um, I guess, successful business venture. So it's int it'll be interesting to see what other people try to, um, other companies do to try to kind of get into this market. And lastly, I would say, this is what I was hoping Nintendo would, d would do with Amiibos. I feel yeah. like they, they completely are missing a, a great opportunity. So right now with Amiibos, you can unlock character skins for some games, but that's predominantly it. It's kind of frustrating. Mm -hmm. And I mean, with these, you can, there's 
games built around specifically these characters. And that's interesting. And also, you know, I can I, I just like how the figures look, especially because they're given a particular art style mm -hmm. that's exclusive to Disney Infinity, which is rather interesting too. So I don't know. I'm excited to play more of Disney Infinity and really just kind of explore this game figure ba this figure based gaming um, further. Cool. So yeah. Thanks again, guys, uh, for watching us here at Reboot Recaffeinate. Um, yeah, we should have more content this week. Uh, for those who haven't checked it out, we have our initial impressions of the Battlefront beta up on our website. Um, there, uh, also on our website is our first two episodes. If you haven't seen those, definitely give those a look. Do you have any other recommendations for what? Oh, well, we have Reboot Live, uh, so those will be live streaming. We're going to be trying to kind of increase how much live streaming we're, do we're going to be doing every week, so I'll try to take a Wednesday slot, and we do have Dota 2 streaming every Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, so keep an eye out for that, and then of course just general daily content. You can follow us at, at The Reboot Gamers on Twitter. We do have a Facebook account, The we Reboot Gamers. the website, TheRebootGamers.com. So you should also go there, um, and that's where all of our content is posted. Um, also, we now just got a Tumblr this week, we do. so you can always follow us on Tumblr, at, at the Reboot Gamers. Um, and yeah, so there's pretty there's a lot of ways to get in touch with us. And of course, if there's anything you want us to talk about during one of these, if you have any recommendations, any thoughts, anything like that, feel free to contact us on one of those many platforms. Awesome. Uh, see you in next week. Yeah, see you guys then. Cool. Should I still say, stay caffeinated? <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Should it be a catchphrase? Yeah, it could be.